I'm a Western chauvinist, and I refuse to apologize for creating a modern world. Chauvinist doesn't mean sexist. Chauvinist means extremely patriotic. Things that will save America, give everyone a gun, venerate the housewife, recognize the West is the best, shut down the government. President Trump. Political correctness is just another word for censorship. Gender pay gap's a myth. Islam is not a very good ideology, and we're allowed to criticize it. Being a man is almost frowned upon. We're all different races, and even sexual orientations. I mean, Maurice right here is gay. Violence can solve problems. Yeah, fighting solves everything. Playing into a long line of what would be normally called white nationalism. The soy boy fucking generation has overtaken, and there is no alpha. The alpha is diminished. So I wouldn't call it a war between the sexes. There's a war by men on women. Most guys my age are just basically interested in sitting at home, masturbating, eating Cheerios, and playing video games, smoking weed, trying to avoid responsibility at all costs. I think that most of the problems we have in the country are because men aren't stepping up and doing the things that they've done forever, being providers, being strong, being manly. These guys are members of the Proud Boys. Some people may watch this film and be offended. Others will think there's value in hearing their views. The Proud Boys is just a fraternity, basically. And what I would like to call it is an alpha male support group. Right, man, let's see it. Hold on. Oh, I'm all proud of your boy. Awesome. We're getting in here, baby. Good job. Third awesome, degree, buddy. man. Looks good. The one thing that the Proud Boys stands for is making men oh, yeah. as yeah. confident and manly and <laughs> successful as possible. Right. And holding them to the standard of being the strong male providers that men have been since the beginning of time. Reclaiming manhood is one of the central pillars of Proud Boyism. They believe masculinity is in danger, and they're not alone. The past year has seen a seismic shift in gender politics. And despite this, or perhaps because of it, Proud Boy membership has exploded. Now they even have chapters in Australia. But I'm here in Texas to try and understand why alpha males need a support group. As a fraternity, we recognize that there's a role for men, and you know, just um, there's a men's role that you know men should assume. And right now, most men aren't assuming the role of what a man should be. Hey, no, shit. They believe family is foremost. Men should be the breadwinners, and that women shouldn't have to work. You shot this? Yeah, I shot that. Over freshly shot deer burgers seems as good a time as any to talk about another of the Proud Boy rules, the masturbation ban. If you just sit at home and have that kind of instant gratification, you don't have to cultivate yourself into some, someone that somebody wants to have sex with. Masturbation is lack of impulse control. So if you can control your impulses, then you can control and regulate most aspects of your life. The Proud Boys were formed in 2016, and that year's presidential election galvanized them. When you see the rise of the Proud Boys, when you see the rise of a candidate like Donald Trump, you might say they're both symptoms of the same problem. People are fed up with what they're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. People felt marginalized and threatened by the PC culture. When it comes to gender equality, the World Economic Forum ranks America 49th, behind the likes of Rwanda and Bolivia. But the Proud Boys say men and women already have equality in Western countries, and that PC culture and feminism has put their way of life under attack. Being a man is, is almost frowned upon because of this third wave feminism movement. They're 
was once a true feminism movement when women really didn't have the same rights as men. That, in my opinion, is a valid, I mean, that's a valid cause. You know, well, why, why shouldn't women have the same rights as men? I can't justify third wave feminism in America because I don't think America needs feminism. What rights are people fighting for? You know, what, what rights do they not already have? Places like the Middle East need feminism. But the idea that it's all good for women in the West does seem at odds with the millions of American women speaking out about sexual harassment using the Me Too hashtag. What do you think of the Me Too movement? I believe the men. I think that there's definitely some cases where there's been some abuse, but I think the extent of it has been exaggerated. I'm an attorney, I see it in my line of work every day. I don't believe that women automatically have a right to believe, be believed just because of the fact that they're women. I think that it takes away from real victims that women who haven't really experienced true sexual harassment or you know true abuse are clinging on to this movement because it's a very popular thing. And this attitude does beg the question, when does chauvinism cross the line and become misogyny? Are the proud boys sexist? Of course not. I mean, we're, we're pro-male, and I think we're pro-female. Absolutely, I think uh, the Proud Boys is pro-female. I think the goal is to strive to cultivate yourself to be a person who's successful that can provide for your wife, so if she wants to stay at home, she has that decision. But I don't think that we have a narrow, dogmatic view of women. Um, I think that sometimes, perhaps, we'd get a bad rap on that. One, two, three, go. Initiation to this group includes getting a tattoo and being punched while listing off the names of breakfast cereals. Some say the ultimate Proud Boy badge of honor is to be involved in a physical conflict related to the cause, but the group denies this. Nevertheless, violence has often been caught on camera. Like these clashes with their left-wing opponents, the anti-fascist group Antifa which has itself been labelled a domestic terrorist group by US Homeland Security. It all gets pretty ugly, and I have to wonder, what do their mums think of all this? What changes have you seen in him since he joined the Proud Boys? He's changed by overall just, I think he's always kind of in this way, but I think this has brought, the introvert at, has gone, and it's brought forward a more vocal, more, a stronger man. So I, I think it's really helped him. I can tell a big difference since he's joined. Do you think it can be difficult to be a man in 2018? Oh, absolutely. Why is that? Because God created men to be leaders and women to be women. I am here to help meet my husband's. What he cannot do, I pick up the slack and do because he's making a living. And I think the men nowadays, it seems like the roles have changed. Oh my goodness. Whilst Diane enjoys the fraternity and friendship her son gets from the Proud Boys, I can't help but think she'd have trouble getting through an episode of this guy's show. You don't need to cut your dick off. You're not a different gender. With free love and bra burning, we got tons of sex and jiggly tits. You're a fat woman, and you're fat for one reason. You burn less calories than you take in. This is Gavin McInnes, founder of the Proud Boys. I'm great, this is it, you got here fast. Gavin's also a co-founder of Vice Media. He parted with the company 10 years ago, citing creative differences. He's now a conservative media personality and comedian. And today, Gavin is recording his show, Get Off My Lawn. Feminist, feminism really uglifies even the hottest of pop stars. So the irony here is that I'm an egalitarian, I'm an anti-racist, I'm a pro-gay, pro-woman's rights individual, the same punk rocker I was when I was 18, but now the Nazi skinheads I'm fighting are you social justice warriors! I think being a man requires four things. You have to have broken a heart, you have to break someone's heart, you have to beat the shit out of someone, and you have to have the shit beaten out of you. 
The plight of the Western male is, right now, is there's a war on masculinity going on in the West, and it starts in kindergarten, where children are punished for being rambunctious. Boys are punished. And seen. He says this war was started by the same people who perpetuate myths like the gender pay gap. Women, before they have kids, they make more money than men. How so? They generate more income. They have a higher average salary than men do at that age. Then they have kids, and then their priorities change, and they'd rather be at home with the kids because it's better at home with the kids. It's more natural. There's nothing wrong with that. Why are we discouraging it? But this idea that men get paid more than women is a lie. It's propaganda. I read a statistic that only 16% of CEOs in this country are women. Yes. So that's unequal? No. Not everyone has to be in a perfect pizza pie of representation. What about in sanitation? Women aren't equally represented in sanitation. Is that an example of sexism? No. Being a CEO of a company means 16-hour days. It is brutal. You're working your ass off. There's also almost unending conflict. It's being a, a brawler. It's being a street kid, basically. And you don't see your family. Women tend not to want that job. The father of three's mix of comedy and conservatism is loved by some. Brown sugar! And called hate speech by others. Isn't it amazing that that's controversial? I'm a Western chauvinist. I think the Western culture is the best. I don't know. Do you prefer uh, Middle Eastern culture where people fuck kids and throw gays off buildings? What about uh, Mexican culture? How many beheadings were there today in Mexico? Are the Proud Boys a hate group? No. I would go farther than that. I would say hate groups don't really exist. You know, you find 35 nuts in Georgia going on a march, or Charlottesville, they managed to amass every single white nationalist in the entire country, and they get, what, 150? I mean, that's statistically irrelevant. Trump is a white supremacist event. It's funny, they say, you're a Nazi. And you go, what? That's, uh, who else is a Nazi? Everyone who voted for Trump. Well, so like half the population? Yeah, okay. I mean, Nazi to them just means someone I don't agree with. But there are those who say the Proud Boys are a hate group. Their opinions on Islam and participation at controversial rallies has put them on the radar of hate group watchdog, the Southern Poverty Law Center, or SPLC. Hey, how are you doing? Very pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. This is the SPLC. Sure. Ryan Lenz is an SPLC spokesperson. When Gavin McInnes and the, and the rest of any other Proud Boy chapter president says that they're here to support Western chauvinism or Western identity, what they're doing is they're playing into a long line of what would be normally called white nationalism, this idea that the United States is justly inherited by white people and white people only. They never say white, they say Western. Right, see, but Western in many ways can be covert for white because what they're talking about is Europe. You know, the Europe and the United States. I've met Proud Boys that are black. I've met Proud Boys that are born in other countries. Does the fact that there's a couple of, you know, um, black or Hispanic Proud Boys absolve, you know, the organization from the arguments and the positions they're holding? No. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it, it, you know, the fact that there's, you know, like, and I would also argue that the that Proud Boys are not as multicultural as, you know, as, as that question seems to suppose. We call them a hate group. And, and, and we have the right to do so, just as they have the right to say that, you know, that any other culture is laughable or whatever. I was a journalist for the Associated Press for a long time. The SPLC has its origins in the civil rights movement and has a long history of fighting groups like the KKK. Its hate list has grown over recent years, as has its funding. A hate group is an organization that seeks to, to vilify or demonize an entire class of people based on an immutable characteristic, something they can't change. Critics of the SPLC say they've turned hate group identification into big business and that they may be too quick to apply the label. Why did the Proud Boys get on the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate group list? I think the Proud Boys are listed because they make no mistake about their feelings regarding Muslims. You start talking about immigration, you know, we, we need to keep the Muslims out because the Islamification of the United States is happening, which is not that far from what you know, the Proud Boys argue. That's when it becomes an issue. Australia should be concerned that, that the Proud Boys are there because of what the Proud Boys represent. Because these ideas, and I, and I say this with the absolute, complete amount of sincerity, these ideas 
It's not a matter of if they'll lead to violence. It's just a matter of when. I head to New Jersey, where Proud Boy media man Paul Bazile refutes the SPLC's claims. Oh, hey! SPLC, the biggest hate group in America, has called us a hate group. It's not, it's an ungoverned, unelected, self-appointed body of people who just basically put together a website and said, oh, we get to determine everyone who's a hate group now. I think Islam is filled with a lot of bad ideas. Christianity is filled with a lot of bad ideas. I think Buddhism has bad ideas too. The issue that people have is, for whatever reason, if you say Islam has bad ideas, that's off the table and taboo and we can't even fairly criticize it because you're looked at as racist, Islamophobic, or whatever it might be, which is absolute nonsense. You're allowed to cr criticize any idea. The Islamification of the USA is a concern for the Proud Boys and conservatives like them. They also want to build Trump's wall. It runs up against the idea of the US as a nation of immigrants, even Paul as a descendant of Italian immigrants. But he draws a distinction. You could look at that and go, well, isn't, isn't that immigration? My ancestors came here from Italy, right, after World War I and they settled in New York and New Jersey, and then they had kids, and then they sent those kids to go back to Italy to shoot Italians, because they were Americans. You understand what I'm getting at? Like, that's the difference. How many of the people who jumped over the border in Texas would be happy to go back and fight a war with Mexico? You could ask them, easily. If, if they went to war with Mexico, who would they be loyal to, you know? Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. How's it going? Great. Get on the female side of the street. These are dreadful. I have an allergic reaction to cornball fucking shit like this. I hope everyone who's ever bought one of these is dead right now. Because it's not funny. It's not funny and it takes itself too seriously while not being funny while thinking it's amazingly funny. Exhale the bullshit. Like, I'm just so woke and amazing and expressive. I'm just exhaling your bullshit. Fuck off, fuck you. Stop telling me things with your horseshit bag, lady. Paul's friend Martina says the Proud Boys are bringing balance back to a society out of sync. You need the patriarchy and you need the matriarchy in harmony and trying to change what femininity is and trying to say that masculinity is all evil is not in harmony. Do you really think men need to drink and fight and, and do everything that they do to, to prove their masculinity? You know, I think maybe, yeah. I'm not a man, so it's like, do girls need to do their girly thing? Yeah, they kind of kind of do. Martina tells me suppressing masculinity and dismantling gender roles erodes the value of family. It's not necessarily a priority to have a family and have traditional values. I'm not saying that all women should be having kids and they need to be in the kitchen, but I think just not acting like those are bad things and understanding the value in that is an important direction. Even all these people that are just bashing the traditional gender roles, don't you think their mothers matter to them? Don't you think their family is like probably the most important thing to them? You know, it really does matter, but they're trying to pretend it doesn't. But Carla Mantia says the Proud Boy's patriotic stance is a bridge too far. There are some good Western values, absolutely. There's also some ones that we could improve on. So the idea that we're better than other people, I think that's where chauvinism goes. And I think that's, I'm not willing to go there. Carla is an academic and author. She's been researching feminist issues for 25 years and is also an expert on men's groups online. They glorify violence. That is a dangerous trend. I think to the extent that they can draw men who feel aggrieved, that is dangerous. The Proud Boys are probably a little men's groups light. They're not as extreme as some of them, but the underlying ideology is still this sense of aggrieved entitlement. They're entitled to something more as men, 
and they're upset that they're that things are changing and that we're evolving to have a little bit more equal world between men and women. And they talk about this kind of idea that there's natural roles for women and natural roles for men. So it's not just men having drinks and talking about things in general, it definitely is trying to re-entrench some earlier models of masculinity and femininity. Is this something that we're seeing more of in the era of President Trump? <laughs> yes, definitely. He has definitely paved the way for and emboldened men to embrace this kind of way of being. Sexism is kind of making a comeback. What feminists and other men are saying is that we'd like to be equal. I think that actually if they would relinquish and renounce some of these values of dominance and being on top and having to be macho and not being vulnerable, they would be happier. And so in that sense, they're voting for their own poison. Before I leave, Paul is trying to get me out on a big Proud Boy boat party. So you've had to pull a few strings to get me on the boat today? Yeah, I'm pulling them right now as we speak. People are very freaked out. They don't like the idea of having you at the party because they feel like they can't relax because in their mind they're like, the media is here. We've seen what the media has done in the past couple of years. The fact is, we are the ugly American at the end of the day. but. It gets portrayed as like we're the evil American. There's a big difference. Nobody talks about the charity work that we do. Nobody talks about the cleanup after the hurricanes that happened in, uh, in America this past year and what we did for that. That didn't make any mainstream news whatsoever. And a lot of people are going, man, I can't have a good time if there's gonna be people on the boat who might cost me my job. I'm just a man who can be trusted. But while these men are aware being associated with the group could get them in trouble, cost them their job or friendships, something still drives them. This is what the West builds. Look at that fucking beautiful fucking skyline. That's the reason why we should be appreciated as well, is because if we look around here, this boat, this, these structures were built on the sweat of men's backs and we're getting blamed for everything. So we sweat and bleed and then we get called out for bleeding on the floor. Thank you very much for having me, uh, despite my obvious and disgusting degeneracy. Although I have, I have learned that there are more homosexuals. In the, in the Among the people on the boat, conservative commentator Milo Yiannopoulos has celebrity status. And in turn, Milo is a big fan of the Proud Boys. The frustrating thing about the Proud Boys for the political left and for their critics is that they're pretty much right about everything. We should be very proud in Western civilization of the extraordinary advances that women have made. But there's a sense, I think, among a lot of men that the pendulum has swung a little bit too far in the opposite direction in a way that is disadvantaging young men. So it's not a boat party movement that's going to fizzle out. It is a seismic shift. It's a tectonic shift. Uh, and it is going to play out over the next 30 years. I think the best part about the Proud Boys is I, I get to surround myself with, with a bunch of guys who have a lot of core values. And uh, I mean, we're all different classes and races and even sexual orientations. I mean, Maurice right here is, is, is gay and he's a Proud Boy. So like, I mean, it's like we're very diverse. What are some of the criticisms that the group gets? Uh, stuff like calling us Nazis, stuff, stuff like that. And, and the thing is that they don't really know what it is. It's too much stuff on the internet that you can look up and it, it gives the wrong information. We just is a group of guys that like to go out and hang out together. That's what we're all about. Dudes pulling the strings and they're watching where the puppets move who've had enough of you. The hanging of these two rich billionaires in city square is coming soon. But what you're gonna do? I've been with this group for a week and the biggest thing they talk about is being misunderstood. Some of their ideas are questionable and others seem like frat boy shenanigans. Perhaps the Proud Boys are the hinge between freedom of speech and aggrieved entitlement. Or perhaps they're the alpha male reaction to a gender war that they feel they're ready to win. Is this about making men great again? Absolutely, yeah. 
But you can't have a great civilization without the men who built it. Right. Without a doubt. These social justice warriors! Fuck them! These liberals! Fuck them! How much would you give to come back to this day and unanimously say, I am a proud Western chauvinist who refuses to apologize for being